People believe that there are thousands of documented healings available to substantiate all the healing claims. Sadly, this is also untrue. What is worse is when the leaders are challenged over their inability to produce medically attested miracles. They reply, oh, we don't need to prove anything. Or they cover their tracks by saying that they themselves don't actually say that people are healed, although they're kindly allowing people to testify to miracles that cannot be substantiated. But even that is not true. Look at these clips. But when you look at the cases that your own organization produces as evidence of successful faith healing, you've, and you provided nine of them recently, when the people looked at them in detail, they found that there was no conclusive evidence of miracles in any of these cases, and indeed in some of them, the evidence that anything had happened as a result of your mission just crumbled in the investigation. Well, I, I have no response to that because but we, many of the cases you have you... to speak to those people. Don't speak to me because I do not make the claims. You have to understand that, Andrew. Morris does not make the claims. Run! Run with me. Do, do you feel any pain no. in your legs? No. No pain at all? No. Just run just a little bit with me. Come on, run just a little bit with me. Oh, yes. <laughs> Put your hand up. Cancer in the bones. She has um, cancer in the blood and the bones. It's all over. Cancer in the blood and in the bones. I want you to just raise your hand and say, Father, I thank you for the healing of the cancer of the bones. Go on, give him praise. Go on, darling. Go on. Get her back to the doctor right away, and in the next day or two, you come and tell us what they tell you as they verify the healing. Please I'd break you. the law, wouldn't I? I want to correct you for the last time. I do not say to the individual, you're healed. They're telling me they've been healed. But so we're not the ones claiming they've been healed. They're the ones claiming they've been healed. Eileen Ferguson, you are healed by the power of God. The disease, dear lady, has just died and you will live. The Lord has healed you. As you can see, Leaders like Benny Hinn and Maurice Cervello do not always tell the truth. And these are not just slip-ups. Just how often they lie will be explored later in the program. As Christians, we know that God can and does perform miracles according to his will. And miracles could indicate that a true revival from God is underway. There is no question that the so-called miracles and phenomena are the confirmation many charismatics seek to prove that they are experiencing a revival. If, on the other hand, it is not miracles that are being seen, then what is happening? We find some clues in Richard Mayhew's book, The Healing Promise. In this book, contributor Andre Cole, world-famous magician and illusionist, shares some valuable insights into the craft of the faith healers. All of us, whether Christian or not, have a curiosity and desire to see and experience the supernatural. We want to believe that what we're seeing is real. Therefore, we let down our guard when it comes to spiritual discernment. Faith healing performance that Benny Hinn and many others have presented through the years is basically an illusion act. In this act, the illusion is created to make it appear that dozens or even hundreds of people are being instantly and miraculously healed by God right before the eyes of the thousands of people who attend these miracle crusades and the millions who watch by television. The truth is that apart from certain psychosomatic illnesses who will respond to the suggestions of a faith healer, Christian or non-Christian, very few people are ever healed of anything. To understand the facts and apparent results of the faith healing performance, it is first essential to understand the difference between faith healing and divine healing are not the same. Faith healing can be done by anyone, Christian or not. Divine healing is something that only God can do. I've adopted a policy of when I've been dealing with a healer or somebody who's written a book on cases of miracles uh, or has got a series of cases to go for the best ones. I've asked them to produce their best ones. 
by asking them to do the work, it takes away any accusation that I might be biased by just picking duff cases and showing that they don't stand up under scrutiny. So the healer himself has been asked to come back with cases, because that puts him under a lot of pressure. If he can't, then where is he at? And um, this is what I did uh, to Maurice Sorello. I asked him, after one of his London missions, asked him on television uh, to produce his three best cases. Um, after a period of a few weeks, he produced a list of actually six cases where permission was given to um, get to the medical details, and none of those six uh, sh were shown to have anything physical that had happened to them. They felt better. Some of them felt better, but the, the, there was no evidence of a physical miracle having taken place. I think there are a number of scriptures that indicate this. Uh, this uh, charismatic movement, the signs and wonders movement in the last days. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 8. Now as Jannes and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Jannes and Jambres were not atheists. They were the magicians of Pharaoh's court who up to a point duplicated the miracles that God did through Moses and Aaron, but they did it by the power of Satan. So Paul is saying, you want to know the opposition to the truth in the last days? It's not going to come from atheists. It's going to come from those within the church who claim to be doing God's uh, work, but they're doing it in the power of Satan. And Jesus said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. So here again, we have that indication. Uh, they're crept in unawares. Paul says, uh, of your own selves shall men arise. Uh, after my departing, grievous wolves will enter in, not sparing the flock, and so forth. So we get the impression that these are not um, uh, enemies on the outside of the church, but the worst thing possible has happened. There's a betrayal of Christ in the inside of the church. I think Christians will be very easily deceived because Jesus was the one who constantly warned his close disciples to be on their guard and to watch out, particularly those who come with grandiose signs and wonders, um, great claims. The classic verse is when people will come, Jesus says, in my name, saying I am the Christ. A much misunderstood passage this because at first sight it makes no sense at all. How can come and say, come in Jesus' name and say I am Jesus? That clearly makes nonsense. But of course, if we remember that Christ means anointed one, then it makes a lot more sense. And we're seeing a lot of that today. I have the anointing, the anointing of Christ. I am coming in Jesus' name. I will use Jesus' name. But people can be, therefore, easily misled. He's using Jesus' name. He must be from God. This is not so. And I think many Christians are going to be easily deceived and are already being deceived by people claiming this anointing. The Antichrist, too, if you like, is the big one, um, will fit into that mold very easily if Christians are already persuaded in this way. The only phenomena that points to end time prophecy that is occurring in churches, in my opinion, is apostasy. There's all a talk about end time revival. I don't see an end time revival as I search the scriptures. The scriptures plainly de declare that there is an end time falling away. And uh, that's no question is happening. The joy will bubble right out of this. Don't pray, it's not a prayer meeting, let the joy bubble. <laughs> Rajneesh says his goal is to create a new man one who is happily mindless. Come to, come to, come to, come to. Uh, uh, uh.